Okay, we, we will next look at, at a, a, a process or a technique called spirometry, which is used to measure different lung volumes and capacities to assess for lung function, okay? It's an instrument that you breathe into and that can measure what the lung is doing in terms of how much air is it moving forcefully in a relaxed way, and that will tell us if your lungs are working properly. Okay, so let's so let's call it spirometry. Spirometry using a spirometer for this part. So let's begin with define some terms. So there's something called your tidal volume. Tidal volume, tidal volume is the amount of air you move in and out of the lungs with each breath, like this, doing quiet breathing. So, so this is air in and out during restful breathing. During restful or quiet breathing. Yeah, so that's this. All right, so then here, the TV is around 500 mLs. So we breathe in and out. Each breath we take, we, 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 we take or push out is about 500 mLs. That's called your tidal volume. Okay? And that's the same for both males and females. Okay, TV. There's another term we use called the inspiratory reserve volume, okay? That's how much air you can bring in after you've already done a tidal end. So if, 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 if you do a normal quiet inhalation, then the extra beyond that is called your reserve in. So this is extra volume in after tidal in. Tidal in and extra, IRV. Okay, that's equal to around 3,100, 1,900. I mean, 3,100 in males, um, 1,900 in females. That's, that's a typical value there. So I think that's an extra air you can bring in beyond your normal end. There's also going the opposite way, the ERV, the expiratory reserve volume. ERV is extra volume out after tidal out. After tidal out. So if you do this, breathe out, then go <laughs> the extra air that you may use for, for example to cough, <laughs> sneeze. That's called an ERV. Okay. Extra out after normal out. And that value is smaller than the IRV. It's around 1200 700. And you should, you should, you should know that these values by the way. Okay, so that's one TV, two IRV, three ERV. The next one we look at is RV. So RV stands for residual volume. So when you exhale even fully, <laughs> empty your lungs, the lungs are never empty. There's always air left, be left behind. Let's call it your residual volume. So this is volume remaining after maximal, maximal exhalation, okay? That's equal to around 1,200, so what, 1,200 for males, around 1,100 for females. And that's all sort of milliliters, by the way, in, in, in terms of units. All right, let's do some more. So we have RV, we're gonna do what's called your capacity. This, so these values are normally obtained by adding different volumes together. So, we'll do your, let me do first, your inspiratory capacity. Inspiratory capacity, we call IC. Okay, IC is how much air you can bring in after a normal out. So if you breathe out normally, then go. That's your IC, okay? 
Okay, so that's max volume in after title out. What can you bring in after a normal exhalation? That's the IC. And that's equal to your, to, to, in terms of formulas, equal to your title volume, the normal in plus the extra in, IRV. Okay? And I see typical, typical values of IC are around 3,600, 2,400. You're going to do next, you do your VC, your vital capacity. Okay. This is the maximum air that can be exhaled after a maximal inhalation. So if you fill up your lungs and blow it all out, that's called your VC. So you can do like, do this. Fill it up, then blow it all out. That's the VC. So that's maximal out, max volume out after max inhalation. Okay. okay, VC here is equal to your tidal volume plus your extra in plus your extra out. So out of three volumes to get your VC, normally that is around 4,800 to about 3,100. Then we have your FRC, functional, functional residual capacity is how much air is left in the lungs after a normal out. You can read out. What's left behind there is called your FRC. That's volume remaining after tidal out, okay? Again, the, the volumes that we we'll use here would be your ERV, what can be pushed out extra. I mean, after, after normal out, you have still, still have the, the, the extra that, that, that can be pushed out on the ERV plus the amount is always there, the RV. So that will give you FRC. So of around 2,400, 1,800. And then the last one we, 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 we pick up from, from this technique is what's called your TLC, your total lung capacity. So TLC, total lung capacity, is the maximum air that your lungs can hold after a maximal inhalation, okay? So, that's volume in lungs after max inhalation. You go there, I guess, and hold it and measure, that's a TLC. So that's equal to all four volumes. It's equal to your tidal volume, plus your residual volume, plus your inspiratory reserve volume, plus your expiratory reserve volumes. So all four volumes that we discussed earlier, when you add them all together, that gives you a TLC of around 6,400, okay? MLs, males, females, there, so TLC. While we're here, let's discuss another, another related topic, something called your total minute volume. That's how much air actually moves in and out of the lungs in one minute, okay? It's the same amount both, both directions, of course. So your total minute volume is how much air moves in 
or out in one minute in, into the lungs. So here we have, so, so, so that'll be equal to the TV, how much air you move per breath, TV, times the number of breaths you take per minute. It's called your rate of respiration. So again, typically your TV is about, it's about 500. So each breath you move in 500 mLs, and you're taking, you're taking around 12 breaths per minute. That's what normal rest and breathing rate, around 12 breaths per minute. So that'll give you about six liters per minute. That's how much air moves into the lungs and also how much air moves out of the lungs in one minute. Call your total minute volume. Now, when you move air into your lungs, of course, you know you, know, you, know you have your trachea up here, your larynx up here, then your bronchi here, to go into your lungs like that, right? So there's air st st that's stuck here. That's, that's not available to go into your alveoli in the lungs where you do your gas exchange, okay? And so the air that's stuck up here is called your dead space volume, DSV. So if you wanted to know how much air is actually being made available to your alveoli to exchange gases, that's called your total alveolar ventilation. So your or is called your alveolar ventilation is how much air is available to you in, in your respiratory zone. Air available for gas exchange. Remember, there's air stuck up here, there's air in your nose, air in your pharynx, air in your larynx trachea, bronchi, that kind of air is nowhere far enough into your lungs to be exchanged in the alveoli. So, so it's called, called DSV. So DSV is volume that's not used, non-usable volume. And that's typically equal to about 150 mLs. So from here, your nose down to here is about 150 mLs of air. That's stuck there, not being used. And so for the alveolar ventilation, we would just have to do what's called TV. So this equals the TV, total volume, tidal volume, tidal volume, subtract the DSV times your RR. So again, it's 500, subtract 150 times 12. It gives you around 4,200 mLs per minute. So even though you're moving in 6,000 mLs per minute, only about 4,200 mLs is available to your alveoli because the rest of it is, is, is stuck, stuck up top, basically. So that's your alveolar ventilation, okay? And now, the, 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 one of the, the good thing about spirometry is that you know, we can look at certain values and have an idea of what may be going wrong with, with the lungs, okay? So it helps us to, to distinguish between obstructive and restrictive diseases, okay? So obstructive diseases of the lung are ones where air cannot move freely. It's been obstructed, it's been blocked, or the, the areas, areas have been tightened, okay? So things like asthma where the airway is narrowed like this, so air can flow easily. That's, a, a, that's an obstructive condition of the lungs. Then you have your restrictive conditions. This is where things like, like when the lungs can't expand, okay? Can't expand, maybe because the tissue is damaged. Okay? Things like uh, tuberculosis. That would damage your lung tissue. So it's, not, it's harder, it's not as elastic, so it cannot expand. So what we know, just in a, in a quick, quick and dirty way of, 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 us, of, us, of, of using spirometry to, to, to indicate these conditions, we know that if you have an increased, if, if, if you have an obstructive condition, usually that means air can't move freely. So there, therefore, you would have increases in your residual volume because it cannot leave. So more air is stuck in your lungs, which normally leads to an increase then in TLC, 
and DC because these both depend on RB. So if this goes up, these will go up. So if we see these changes, it normally indicate, indicates to us that this is, we have an, 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 an obstructive condition that makes FRC. We have an, an obstructive condition in place. And then if it's restrictive, it means the lung cannot expand. That means it can't hold a lot of bait you know, in, in its resting state. So then here you have a drop in RV. So, so this one indicates something that's obstructive. When you have a drop in RV and a drop in TLC, FRC, and VC, these all indicate that perhaps the nature of the condition is restrictive. Okay, we'll pause there.